folks, we are here with the Astrolab rover. We got about five minutes to talk to the gentleman who's behind this entire project. Really grateful for this opportunity. Would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. Hi, my name is Jared Matthews. I'm the founder and CEO of Astrolab. Uh, Astrolab is a startup uh, founded in 2020 um, in Hawthorne, California. And we're building uh, this mobility platform behind us called Flex, or the Flexible Logistics and Exploration Rover. And uh, we're um, excited uh, uh, about uh, the news that NASA announced last week, um, that we were uh, selected to um, uh, take part in the Lunar Terrain Vehicle Services Program, uh, which will provide um, uh, mobility for uh, Artemis astronauts in the future, uh, unpressurized mobility, as well as doing robotic uh, science and logistics on the lunar surface for the Artemis campaign. And uh, in addition to that, we also have our own commercial mission going to the moon in, uh, in late 2026. Uh, and we're, uh, um, uh, our business model is to basically conduct the last mile uh, logistics on the lunar surface for our customers. Well, I've got a grand total of three questions for you. Sure. Question number two. I see that this thing is very big. I'm told that it can carry a payload of up to one and a half metric tons. That's a lot more than most Artemis vehicles. What do you have in mind for this, for the future of a lunar base and, and a presence on the moon? Yeah, well, we really see Flex serving as a catalyst for the lunar economy. And uh, yeah, what makes it unique is it has this modular payload approach. So um, it's able to swap out cargo implements, instruments over time and ultimately have a dynamic utility serving a wide range of, of customers. Um, under the belly of the rover, yes, we can carry uh, three cubic meters of uh, customer cargo, uh, 1,500 kilograms. So that's about two times the capacity of a Ford F-150 pickup bed. Um, the rover itself is, is about the size of an SUV. It's specifically this size uh, because I, I left SpaceX, uh, uh, which was my prior uh, job before starting Astrolab, I left knowing the width of the Starship door. So, you know, we've made the biggest uh, platform you can pass through that door um, to really, um, you know, uh, enable a future in which Vehicles like Starship, not just Starship, but Blue Origins, Lunar Lander, and others are bringing tens to hundreds of tons of cargo to the lunar surface regularly. Um, our kind of value proposition is to take all that cargo you know, off of the lander, get it deployed to wherever it needs to be, get it set up, get it serviced, uh, to again, really serve as a catalyst for the lunar economy. Last question. Um, I've been told about a number of advantages, and some of them are quite obvious. 360-degree um, visibility, a lot of ground clearance. Um, what is the main advantage you think this rover has over the competition? Well, I think a, a unique feature is our adaptive suspension approach. So we can raise and lower each wheel independently. Uh, they're out on limbs, basically. Uh, so it's four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, and then this adaptive suspension, which is a mixture of active and passive suspension elements. Uh, the active elements allow us to raise and lower the ground clearance. So, uh, so we can r uh, lower the belly of the rover all the way down to the ground. That allows us to uh, both pick up and release cargo onto the surface. Um, it also allows us to, uh, if we're, for example, driving on a slope or cross slope, we can raise the upslope wheels, push down the downslope wheels, and keep the chassis level which is of course uh, helpful and uh, more comfortable for, for occupants uh, if we're carrying astronauts. Um, and, uh, and it en enables other interesting things like uh, inchworm mobility to extricate yourself from uh, you know, difficult, difficult terrain. Um, and is helpful for stowing you know, compactly for launch. So we, ra we, we um, raise the limbs up and turn the wheels inboard to stow uh, in the lander and make ourselves as compact as possible. So I think that's a, a unique feature uh, that we have on our platform. I'm not sure of the competition if, if they have something similar, but uh, from what I've seen, I don't, I don't think so. Well, I appreciate it. This is a wonderfully innovative machine. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks again for your time. I know. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to try to drive the Astrolab
Flex Rover with the help of my friend here. Alex Henry. Alex Henry, thank you so much. What do you want me to do? So you're gonna grab the joystick. You're gonna feel the dead man switch underneath there. You yep. don't have to use that. Okay. Um, in this VR simulation, if you wanna go forward, you're gonna push the joystick forward. If you wanna turn left while pushing it forward, go left. Same thing with the right. Alrighty, so forward we go. You're actually climbing up over the edge of a crater here. Okay, is this Shackleton Crater? <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure where we are located right now within this, but it is uh, mapped to the lunar south pole. There. Ah, interesting. How is this, how, what kind of advantages do you think this thing has in terms of navigating the lunar south pole, which has really difficult terrain compared to the rest of the moon? So we've, uh, we've got a onboard suite that is really going to help us uh, navigate these things uh, that, that will uh, enable us to continue to explore areas of that lunar cell pole. Fantastic. This is really amazing. Anything else you want to show me here besides driving around? I would definitely try and get a little bit of air if you can. Okay. Uh, one of the few times you'll actually get a chance to do that, obviously, uh, anyone piloting on the moon will not be doing something like that. Sure. In the, VR, uh, in the VR space here, it's it's uh, kind of fun and easy. And to here do. we go. Yep, we're about to do that again. So this thing's doing it about rep what? 15. Wow. So, yeah, you're seeing your speed in the bottom right hand corner there. 15 kps. Yes. But because of one sixth gravity, it's it's easier to get air. I assume, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. So how does this differ from a, the uh, VR that astronauts might mess with? Um, or is it the same? That's a good question. Uh, likely it would be probably a little bit more advanced um, for the astronauts as they, uh, as they prepare to drive something like this. Sure. Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> oh wow, that's, that's wonderful. That's a magnificent view. <laughs> Getting some more air there. So how do you feel about being one of the three selected? Oh, we're super excited. We are super excited. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's been something the team has been incredibly focused on. And, uh, you know, we, we look forward to showing NASA what we can do over this next 12 month period. There. It is, I mean, it's hard to imagine. You could see, I'm just about to turn this thing over. And yet, given the insane maneuvers that I'm pulling, most things would just topple right over. But this, the suspension on this is so impressive. Am I heading into a shadow, Derry, or Correct. am I just kind of... Correct. Gotcha. So you can see off to your left there, you see the sun er, disappearing there, which is why it gets super dark. Right. All right. Well, I could do this for a while, and I don't want to. I want to go ahead and let uh, your colleagues get, get a go. So thank you so much for this. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, definitely. Definitely.